Ljubljana, capital of the young Republic of Slovenia, a city of culture and history, plus elegance and charm. Slovenia's Florence, situated between the Alps and the Balkans, the Adriatic and Lake Balaton. The old place, with the monument of national poet Prešeren, is gateway to the old town. With its pink marble facade, the early Baroque Franciscan Church of Mary dominates the square. Its monumental interior has a main nave and two side naves. The high altar was designed by famous sculptor Francesco Roba. The frescoes, the work of impressionist Matthias Sternin. The square developed from a medieval cross in front of the city gates. It is now a popular meeting place. Here, the Middle Ages meet the Baroque and Art Nouveau. In 1895, a devastating earthquake destroyed many of the city's buildings, but the Franciscan church managed to survive. Much rebuilding work followed. Close by, this included the stately Grand Hotel Union, which today shines out in all its glory. It features pure Art Nouveau both inside and out, as well as a traditional Viennese cafe. This was the city's first modern hotel that featured Art Nouveau down to the last detail. From the old place is a famous three-lane bridge that spans across the Ljubljana River to the old town down from the castle. At the beginning of the Middle Ages, Tromostovje was documented as having been the city's most important river crossing. During reconstruction of the riverbanks in 1931, two side bridges were added to the main stone bridge. Including stylish colonnades. Below, various market halls appeared. With several good quality delicatessens located in a wonderful setting. Much appreciated by local shoppers. There's also a covered market with roofed colonnades in classical style. This was also created by city architect Plechnik. The fish market's basement is a work of art in itself. a diverse and appetizing array of fish from the seven seas. Nearby in the lower arcades there's a good view of the river. En route to the cathedral is the colorful flower market.
here, plants and freshly cut flowers do their best to outshine each other, and it's difficult to leave empty-handed. The Dom Church Stolnica was built according to the design of Venetian Andrea Pozzo in the 17th century. There had previously been a church on this site dedicated to St. Nicholas. The interior of this Baroque church is quite overwhelming, with great attention to detail. Again, Plechnik has sensitively added Art Nouveau design. On the external facades, the bronze portal is most impressive, as well as Gothic elements. The twin tower and the dome resemble the Il Gesù church in Rome. The portal of the seminary is flanked by two figures of Hercules. It contains the city's oldest library, whose original features date from the 17th century. With a wooden panelled room, whose ceiling is decorated with an illusionistic fresco painted by Domenico Quaglio. Quaglio came from an Italian family of artists and created this fine setting for these superb cultural treasures. Manuscripts and prints from a bygone age. Four threatening winged dragons guard the concrete and iron dragon bridge, which is one of the first of its kind in Europe. In 1901, the former wooden bridge was replaced by this stone Art Nouveau style bridge. Butchers were allowed to wash their produce here after having been expelled from the center of the city. The monument of poet Valentin Vodnik is located on the edge of the city's market square. At Vodnikov Trig, each day local farmers offer a good range of products. This is always a lively place, full of all the hubbub of a typical market atmosphere. There's an abundance of fresh fruit and everything is presented in a very tempting way. Here, money soon changes hands. It has everything. Near the marketplace, a modern cog railway travels up a steep slope to the Ljubljana fortress. The last section has been carved into the rock face. Situated on the 400 meter high castle hill, the Slovenian Acropolis was once inhabited by the Illyrians and Celts. Roman watchtower later became both a strategic fortress and castle.
In the Middle Ages, the city's first weir system was documented in 1144, owned by the Dukes of Spanheim. The castle derived its present appearance following the Great Earthquake of 1511. At that time, it served as the seat of the city's governor. Recently, a section of the castle's interior showcased many of Slovenia's historical objects in a large exhibition. Modern technology also played a part. The original Gothic and Baroque redecorated chapel is considered to be an historical work of art. The magnificent view from the large tower across the city demonstrates the dimensions of the castle and its massive defensive walls. The impressive historical heart of the city. A triumphal arch marks the entrance to the Zala Cemetery on the northeast edge of the city. With a number of fine, richly decorated chapels. This was yet another vision of city architect Jotze Plechnik, a splendid city of the dead. Here he created a masterpiece that represented the transition from the world of the living to the world of the dead. A tranquil place. Back in the center, we explore the city from the Lubyanica River. A boat trip on a barca provides a particularly romantic view of the old city and its bridges. Upriver to the city's green suburbs. And on the return journey we pass by market arcades near to Dragon Bridge. The river still determines the life of the city and gives it a certain southern charm. Mesni Trig is the heart of the old town. And a meeting point of local culture. Today, the Rotovt City Hall, with its loggia and characteristic clock tower, is today's seat of the city parliament, with views to the towers and domes of Dom Cathedral. The inner courtyard of the town hall is quite small. Its external walls are decorated with stylish graffiti. In the courtyard, there's a splendid Nazis fountain that dates back to the Middle Ages. Well-preserved mansions and the elegant palazzi of the city's once most important inhabitants frame the stylish town square. Narrow streets lead to the river. Again and again, small places of interest appear. 
such as the Rib Yi Trig, the old fish market, and a fountain crowned by a female figure. A stone coat of arms dated 1528 marks Posh House, probably the city's oldest building. The former artisan's quarter became a fashionable meeting place on the riverbank. The site of today's Schuster Bridge has been an important commercial access point to the old town since the Middle Ages. Those who worked here did not have to pay tax. At the end of Staritrig is a small square with a Hercules fountain framed by carefully restored townhouses. Some of them date from the Middle Ages and most contain Baroque elements. The names of their builders or erstwhile owners can be found at various locations of the buildings. Staritrig is a lively street which winds around Castle Hill with shops, cafes and entertainment. St. Jakob Church dominates Lefstick Square, which marks the end of the old town. The Jesuits built it on the site of an earlier Gothic church. Next to it is a column of Mary that celebrates the fact that the city was spared from the Turks. It was formerly the site of a monastery. Externally, the church is rather plain, but the interior is richly decorated. The stone altars were designed by Venetian sculptors. It was designed by architect Francesco Roba, who lived nearby. Just past the church, Baroque Ljubljana becomes medieval Ljubljana with the Florian church. Wall paintings, old fountains and low buildings mark this one of the oldest areas of the city. Not far from here, in the city's outskirts is the Botanical Garden, which was created in 1810. A place of peace, scent and isolation, and a good place for a walk. A modern glasshouse contains more than four and a half thousand species of plants. A wonderful rock garden adorns the oldest scientific and educational institution in the city. Surrounded by pond and forest. On the other side of the river is the old fishing district of Krakowo. Vegetable gardens and low buildings emphasize its rural character. Close by the city's Roman history and along the Roman wall, excavations. The foundations of an early Christian basilica.
Here the Romans founded Imona. A strategically important location at the crossroads of major trade routes. Towards the new town centre is a 13th century church and monastery of the ancient Teutonic Knights. This old courtyard was adapted by Plechnik in the 1950s and an open-air theatre was added. A converted church building with elements dating back to the Renaissance and Baroque periods eventually became a museum. The nearby Congress Square was originally a park and the grounds of a Capuchin monastery. The university building in neo-Renaissance style frames a corner of the large area which Plechnik also adapted. Its name is derived from the Congress of the Holy Alliance, from where several statesmen made decisions in connection with Italy following victory over Napoleon. The wide neoclassical Katsina building once contained a club for the city's high society. In front of it, a copy of a gilded patrician statue on an ancient column from Imona. And on the other side of the square, the unusual Baroque church of the Ursuline with its facade of monumental columns. Almost hidden is the entrance to Ljubljana Zoo, which nestles at the bottom of Rotsnik Hill. Contented animals. Due to spacious and well-kept enclosures. Zebras eat close to giraffes. Bears and capybaras spot an elephant. It's an exemplary zoo with a superb collection of animals from around the world. Next, to the west, the city's sprawling Tivoli Park. These small castles were once inhabited by famous people. Today this fine park is the green lung of the city and popular with city folk. Columns flanked the main path up to Tivoli Castle that was built by the Jesuits in the 17th century and soon became a summer residence of the bishops. Romantic lakes with waterfowl and pretty flowers embellished the park, once the home of Field Marshal Radetzky. A fragrant rose garden too. Ljubljana is more than just beloved, it's also cosmopolitan. And a city of joie de vivre and pleasure, where the Middle Ages, Baroque and Art Nouveau meet with the relaxed lifestyle of the South. <laughs>